What's up, everyone? Uh, I'm Chris, and today I'm joined by Wayne, writer of the Bulge American book, and Victor, uh, graphic designer and painter extraordinaire from the Big Four with his American Army. Yep. Today we're going to take a look at Bulge American, all the cool stuff that's inside it, uh, what you can expect to be getting excited about over the next few weeks and months, what you might be building, what you might be painting, and why we put it there. First things first, um, so this is the, the second late war book, and it takes takes over from where D-Day American left off. Yes. What's, how does he, how do we progress? Where does the book go? What does it cover? So even though, so D-Day American, it, it's, it pretty much covers the, the Normandy landings, that period, but it goes as far up to the, basically the, um, taking Paris and, and getting up to the frontiers of, of France before they start mm. uh, encroaching on places like Belgium and, um, and, and the German border. So that's that's what D-Day covers. And then this book basically covers from that point on till the end of the war. Right, so all the way from the border of France and Germany right through to the capture of Berlin. Yeah, so it covers all the all this all the fighting in the Lorraine and in Alsace in Alsace further south. Yep. Um the fighting against the battle of the Battle of the Bulge and the fighting yep. against the German offensive that started it. Uh, and then Nordwin after that, and then yep. the crossing of the Rhine later, okay. and then into Germany, and then advancing through Germany until they encounter some Soviets coming the other direction. So it's it's full. Yes. You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff in there. <clears throat> so I guess the important thing to say is also that <clears throat> we've alluded to it. So this is the second and final late war yes. book. So this covers the Americans right up to the end of the war until, yep. is it May 2nd? Right, so if you're hanging out for something, mm. it's in this book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what's we'll start with the tanks. Yep. I think we've got some boxes here, so that should probably give you a hint as to what, what you can expect. But do you want to have a look at some of them? Should we start with the Sherman companies that are in the book? Maybe yeah. Have a look, yeah. see what's in there, what the new plastics are, and what's mm. cool about them? This, I think the first one we'll come across is the veteran M4 Sherman tank company. Yes. Yeah, so what... Do you want to explain veteran, non-veteran? Uh, the veteran guys will be hit on 4+, plus, so they're careful. Yep. Uh, similar to D-Day, we have the two Sherman companies in there. Um, so later on in the book, we've got the aggressive guys hit on 3+. plus. Yep. The cool thing about the veteran tanks is they will have access to the Pershing tank platoon and the Super Pershing. Um, yeah, that's in formation, right? In formation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of the... Your core platoons, your Shermans. This is where you'll be using your late Shermans, which is a step up from D Day, and you can also upgrade them to the new Easy Eights and Jumbos. Um, so there's a lot of versatility in these platoons, Ooh. and also in the formation. Yeah. So the the, the late Sherman is, uh, is to use the technical jargon is the M4A3. It's got a bigger more powerful engine um and it's got a um the later one's got the the same slope armor as the 76 mil that's all th through all the shermans so even the 75s have that with these guys so they've got seven front armor um and then there's the variants they're all based on the same tank so you've got the as victor says the easy eight with the it's got different suspension that gives it a, a few more a bit more mobility and some extra special rules um and then there's the um so you've got 75s and 76s, the Easy 8, which is a, like a Super 76. <laughs> um, and then there's a Jumbo, which is a, a tank that's got extra armor. Basically, it's um, an assault tank, but they, they they issued them to normal tank platoons, and then they were used kind of like, they used to lead the way. So that was a tank that was in the front of the column, and it would probably get hit first. It had more armor, so it could withstand that hit, yeah. Yeah, I'm just skipping over 11 front armour. Mm. Yeah. It's dynamite. Yes, yeah. compared to the normal 7. Yes. Yeah. And the, even the side armor is pretty good because it's got 8 side armour compared to 4, which is a normal Sherman. Yeah. So the way you'd be using that now is you'd have, when your platoon takes hits, you're going to be trying to move some of those hits onto your jumbo so that it can soak up those Yeah, yeah, you rounds. take advantage of the mistaken target rule and, yep. uh, and, and push the extra hits onto your better armour tank. Yeah. Yep. So with those jumbos, you can have one in each platoon yeah. and in the HQ, yeah. and it can also be a 75 or a 76, which yes. is quite cool. And you'll get both turrets in the kit, so you can swap mm. as needed for your games. It's quite cool. The 
the late Sherman Platoon is a real sort of trademark Lego building block style of thing. Mm. You can actually, it's not just a Sherman Platoon anymore, is it? You can really personalize how your platoon looks. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely not. You just, you don't, you're not getting a, a flat one type of tank. Yeah. And then that's it. No, you're getting a kind of, you can, and you can, you can tailor your platoon to do different things depending on what you put in it. Yeah. Yep. Are you painting a pile of these? Yes. Well, these are my ones here at the front. I assembled over the weekend. Yep. I've still got more to build, but that is the next six weeks painting there. <laughs> yep. And I think 10 easy eights and four jumbos is a good number. <laughs> Just a nice and round number. Yeah. As well. yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That gives you all the options. <laughs> all the options. So one of my favorite tanks this is going back a few years because this is... So the jumbo and the easy eight, they're new. We've never made them before in plastic. One of the plastics coming back is the M26 Pershing. And I love the fact that you, you touched on it, and I'd, I'd forgotten about it, about having Pershings inside your formation and having the Super Pershing inside your formation. Mm -hmm. Do you have any Pershings on your painting plan? Yep. Yep. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> yep. I'll be doing three Pershings and one Super Pershing. Yeah. That's a good number. Yeah. So we can touch on the points there. Just as an example, three Pershings for 29 points. So you are mm. committing a... Well, literally almost a third of your uh, force to it. But they do bring a lot with that 9 front armour and anti-tank 14, of course. Yeah, it's got the big 90mm yeah. gun on it, so it's got a good range and good good anti-tank. Yeah, yeah, because the Americans, I guess they 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 peter out in terms of their anti-tank values. 14's looking pretty good yeah. for them, isn't it? So I mean, other than Jackson, say, and... Yeah, like well, your standard 76 is a 12, but we do have a... Well, we'll mention it, talk about it more later. We do have a command card that allows you to upgrade... Oh, to, go for it now. ...to 13. Yeah. Yeah. The hyper velocity armor piercing yep. ammunition command card. Yeah. So if you want your seventy sixes to have anti tank thirteen, you just buy that command card. That that's one point per two tanks. So you know, depending on how many tanks you put in your platoon, every every half a point per tank. But you have to pay a full amount. So, so round number tank platoons is optimal. <laughs> yeah, optimal. Yeah, yeah. But if you want, if you want to buy three and only and but you still have yep. to spend two points. So yeah. So what else have we got? I'm oh, just running thing. back to yeah. the. Easy Eight, I think it's yeah. worth mentioning. American players will be familiar with Stabilizer. The Easy Eight brings Smooth Ride. So if you move four inches, 10 centimeters or less, you don't suffer the plus one to hit for Stabilizer. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to creep around, you can fire at full rate of fire, but still get movement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That ability to just sort of make the most of any cover that's available and just reorient yourself. Yeah. 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 Another cool thing about the Easy Eight kit is um, you get the parts in there to build them as up-armoured ones and a, a command card to go with it, which brings them to front armour 8 and side armour 5, which is quite useful. Yeah, that's actually really... It's, I don't know the statistics off my head, but that feels like a nice little bump to help protect you from the pack 40s of this mm, world. Or the anti-tank 12 out there. Yeah. Yeah, and you can actually do the same thing with the normal Sherman Lates as well. There's a command card to also up-armour them. And, the same, and that kit also has the same plates that you glue on the front and on the sides and yeah Ooh, real toolbox plastic kits there yeah now one command card that's quite cool is if you've got a sherman company from d-day the m4 sherman the early ones mm -hmm. um and you just want to add some jumbos for righty you can use the list in here downgrade the late shermans to the ones you've got and add jumbos to that force oh that's pretty cool so if you just want to get a taste of some of the new tanks using your old existing tanks that's the way mm -hmm. to do it yep that sounds really easy yeah nice what else is in the formation? We've got, uh, in, sorry, inside the book here, we've got chaffies. As I'm turning chaffies. through the book, they just come to me and say, mm -hmm. paint me. I think there's some chaffies here. Yeah, down there. It's the same with the Shermans. Got veterans and the standard guys. Yep. Uh, but the formations look the same this time between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, it's a, they should be the, it's the same organisation as the Stuarts. So just, mm. The Chaffees are just a replacement for the Stuarts. Mm. Yeah. A much cooler replacement yeah. too. So it's got a um, it's got similar armour, but it's got a much bigger gun. It's got a 75mm gun on it. So right. um, they can knock out other medium, or they, not other, but they can knock out medium tanks yeah. with their gun. So. Yeah, anti-tank 10. I mean, it's not yeah. you're not going head-to-head -head with Panthers, but I guess your job is to go head-to-side. Yeah, know, well, I mean... Flank. If you run into some Panzer fours, you might as well shoot at them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They're dynamite. And actually, looking at their speed, quite nippy too. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they've got the same. They've got a good, good mobility. Um, I think their cross is not too bad either. Three, yeah, three, three, three pretty good. So, what are the other new sort of tank releases that we've got that I've forgotten about? 
Uh, well, if you go to the um, if you go to the the non-veteran Shermans. Yep. Let's have a look. Here we go. Uh, you, they've got the same selection, except they, you know, their ratings are not not, not quite as mm -hmm. high. But that means you get more of them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in there, but you can take with either the veterans or the non-veterans mm. is the Calliope. If you turn over a couple of pages. Oh yes. There we are. Which is a was a rocket launcher mounted on top of a Sherman. Yeah. So that gives you an information barrage or salvo barrage. Yep. Yeah, bombardment. Yeah. Jumping back a step, I think it's worth mentioning kind of we mentioned it, but the super pershing, which you can have one of in the veteran Sherman company, with anti tank eighteen. Oh. I think that's gonna scare a few opponents. Yeah. And front thirteen. Mm. So that's hard legit. to remove as well. Yeah. I can actually see that as being in one tank, it's quite useful. You can mm. go and ninja an objective with it potentially or defend one. Yes. Yeah. All right, moving on from the tanks, we've got plenty of infantry in here. But obviously we armored rifles, uh normal leg infantry. Yep. What's your what's your pick? What do you like and why? Oh, I like I like just normal rifles. Yeah. Um all right, so well, we've got a battle weary rifle company here, which looking at them, they look careful. They've, they've had a long fight already. Yeah, so, so I mean, this this fits the slot between like you look at the guys in D Day. You've got the the kind of the green train guys, and you've got your veteran guys who've been around for a bit longer. Mm. These kind of these are basically representing your troops that have been fighting for maybe a little bit too long. Right. So they're still careful to hit and they're veterans for their skill level but they're not as enthusiastic anymore so right. they'll, they'll tend not to be um uh, doing anything rash as far as morale goes so they'll they'll be a bit harder to yep. um un, unpin and they'll um and they won't counter attack as readily and that sort of thing right yeah because yeah. yeah, yeah. the other infantry list that i guess a lot of people would be excited about would be the american parachute rifle company yeah, well, that's a, that's the guys you do if you want to be more aggressive. So yep. they're, um, they're they're fearless, and these guys have got the nuts special rule. So this makes them different from the ones in D Day, mm -hmm. is that they last stand is two plus. So basically, they hang around until they pretty much die. What's the uh, what's the the why nuts? Nuts is because during the siege of Bastogne, the um, the Germans sent sent a, a party across the to negotiate with the 101st Airborne stuck in Bastogne. Yep. And uh, and demanded they surrender, and the reply from the commander was nuts. Nuts. Fair enough. <laughs> so these are these are your, your your sort of your traditional para. So if you've already got a parachute army, you can just dive straight in and start yeah. Using you've already painted one up for D Day. You can just just fill them with these. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, I mean the the, the next formation is the uh, glider guys. Oh yeah. And they're a bit more um, though they have. Similar selection of uh, troops as they did in D Day. Mm -hmm. These guys are, are just much better because you know they've had the experience of fighting. When they went in, went right. into Normandy, they were pretty green. Yep. So by Bastogne, they're almost as uh, experienced as the um, the paratroopers are. So. Right, they've, they've had to get a bit yeah. of on the job training and stuff. Yeah, so these guys yep. are veterans. They're careful. They're mm -hmm. confident. Um, but they also get the nuts rule, so that gives them a, oh, yeah. a last stand of three plus. Yep. Yep. So one of the cool things I like that that's added to the book is the feast it's not a famine now it's a feast of tank destroyers we've got what you had an m10 back from the d-day book yep now we get to add the m18 m18 and the m36 yep so three very different flavors of, of tank destroyers and also the uh, tank destroyers in here uh, are all now their track their skill level is now veterans um though and it, most it's those of you who who know anything about uh, the Normandy campaign will know that M18s did do a bit of service in Normandy. Uh, so there's a command card there also that lets you downgrade your M18s to be the same rating as the M10s in the D-Day books. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can now field and basically a fresh M18. Yeah. Yeah. So you can formation and represent the ones that were in Normandy. Yeah. So what I quite like actually about the three tank destroyer units is you've got tank destroyers galore, then you've got your security sections and all of them have that same sort of organization so <laughs> it sounds terrible go buy some m20 security sections and then just chop and change swap out your tank destroyers depending on what you feel like on the day yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and especially with the the m36 tank destroyer company your second platoon can be m10s so you can really right 
be so if you've already got within the list as well. Yeah, if you've already got an M10 Force, mm -hmm. you can just add in some M36s, which are the same kit, just different turrets. Yep. Yep. So hopefully if you've already got an M10 Force, you've built the turrets or put those bits aside mm. to now build. Yeah, they tended to, when they started introducing the M36, they gave them to units that already had M10s. Right. Some got totally replaced and some kept some M10s and mm -hmm. just had M36 added to them. So we've got a mix. You can have a mixed uh, company. Mm -hmm. So you can have M10s and M36s. Yeah. I will say that M18 is my favourite of the three. It's just, I don't know, so yeah. sporty looking. Here we are. Ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah, so sporty. Between that and Chaffees, they look quite cool together. Mm. Sports car army, as opposed to made a, of paper with front of uh, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the M36 is pretty cool because it's got the big 90 mil gun on it, so that gives yeah. you any tank 14. So, yeah, and we mentioned with the tanks the same command card, the hyper velocity arm piercing rounds for the tank destroyers as well, the M18 and the M10. Yeah, the ones with the 76 or 3 inches will go to 13 if you buy that card for them. Same, same points cost, I think. Is it yep. the same points cost? Yeah, yep. yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, well, I mean, what's We've all got favourites. Hmm. Victor, what's what's yours? Uh, mine's the easy eight. Yeah. Which is why I'll do ten of them because if I'd like to at one point put as many as I can on the table. Yep. Um. Yeah. I. Just, I mean, everyone's seen the movie Fury. It's just a cool tank. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely look very cool, and they're they I think they're they're different enough to be interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just the looks. There's there's enough going on under the hood to make them a. a You've got to make a decision as to what yeah. you want. Yeah, game-wise, I'm looking forward to making the most of that smooth ride rule. Mm. Being able to, you know, position where I need to be to get the right shot, as many shots as possible. Yep. Wayne? Me? Uh, oh, um, I, I like all the all the new Shermans. I've uh, cool, the you know, the Easy 8 and the Jumbo, and even just the normal 76 mil Sherman is, yeah. is, is pretty cool. So, what am I excited about? There's just so much in this book. Um, it, it's look, it's going to have to be the Hellcats, uh, and Chaffees. We'll see though. I've got a lot of painting on my to-do list. I've got some stuff I want to work on for the Bold British book. Um, but it's really hard to beat those light zippy tanks. Mm. They're just, they're just so cool. That, yeah. That's. Yeah. I mean, there's another option in the command cars. It's, if you don't want to just do a light tank company of Chaffees, yeah. you could do a cavalry tank company. Well, tell that, me. That gives you, um gives you the cavalry recon guys as well in part of your formation yeah so instead of having mm. tanks and the normal tank support you yeah. have the tanks and then the cavalry recon support oh that sounds cool mm -hmm. so i'm not short of options then that's for no. sure all right thanks for joining us i mean that's the uh, bulge american book in a nutshell obviously it's full of stuff whether or not you're upgrading your existing uh, d-day army or starting a new army all from scratch let us know down below if you've got any questions or comments. I'm sure we can try and answer those for you over the coming weeks while you wait for the release. And hopefully we'll see you all again soon.